Right, uh, thank you for purchasing a Gamaco Hardness Tester. Uh, particularly if you've got it in the bulk buy, follow us on Facebook. Uh, on bulk buyers and clearance sales from Gamaco Artists and Supplies to get in on good deals like this. Um, we're going to unbox one and set it up so that uh, you'll have a bit of an idea what you're, what you're in for when they arrive and um, you'll be able to set yours up. First thing, obviously you'll need to uh, get into the crate and we'll Okay. Here you'll find your weights. Very important. You'll have an accessory box and some interesting instructions. Probably won't be looking at those. In the accessory box, when you open it, there'll be a set of feet for levelling, numerous hardness test blocks. We'll have a look at those in the, toward the end of the video during setup. Some anvil options, a small anvil and a V anvil. And go on the bottom, again we'll look at those later. Um, indenters, this one here is a ball indenter. And this one's a diamond indenter for what we want for knife making, we're just going to use the diamond indenter. And some spare balls and a spare fuse and a power cord. Okay, if you don't know what that's for, please pack it up and send it back because it's too stupid day in a heartless test. Right, let's move this down here. Now these things are not light. They weigh in at um, they weigh in at about uh, 100 kilos, 90 kilos. I'll get my colleague to give me a hand to lift it up so we stop filming for a minute. Um, very importantly, during transit these things have rattled and rocked around all over the world coming to us and getting to your door and they probably won't be in calibration so we're going to have a look at that, show you how to check calibration and how to mo um, modify it if needs be. And um, we'll get right into that in a few moments. Lift up. All right, so first of all, we're going to install the feet which just screw into the bottom of the unit. It's important to have the unit level when you calibrate. So, install your feet, mount it on a solid surface and get it level with a good quality level. Note that as this drops, the anvil and screw, to get it to full, to full, um, as low as you'll possibly go, you'll need to have a hole in your bench because the end, this screw and end uh, will hit the table. So it needs to have a hole in your bench if you want to go further than that. Most knife makers, it's not going to make any difference, but if you bought it for something other than knife making, uh, it certainly will make a difference. All right, we'll get the feed in. Turn off. Okay, so we've mounted the harness tester on a sturdy base. We haven't, but you will because it will work better, much better on a sturdy base. Let's talk about the principles of operation, all right? When we hit the start button on this, it's gonna apply a pressure on an indenter. It's gonna push it, a piece of diamond, basically, into a piece of steel, and it's gonna measure how far it goes into the steel. By measuring how far it goes into the steel, we then know, we can determine how hard the steel is. So that's the basic principle of operation. So what you'll notice is every, all the parts are covered in grease, which is lovely, but if I put a blade or a piece of steel on this grease and I push down with the indenter, what's going to happen? It's going to displace grease, move down further, and the harness tester is going to think that the part's much softer than what it is. So you need to make sure that before you start, you clean all the grease, protective grease off, particularly off the angles, um, you might like to go into the screw thread as well, it will make a difference. You need to keep your machine oiled to protect it, um, covered so that you don't get rust, 
but all of this oil is going to affect your readings for, for sure to start with. Okay, as it, as it extrudes out and, and displaces. So I'm going to get in there and just clean out that whole section and we get started. Now, quick note on the angles. For knife making, I prefer this one, the smaller anvil rather than the bigger one. Reason being is because we're testing other people's blades, if they've got a bit of a bow in them and it sits on the anvil like that, again, it'll read soft. It doesn't, it, 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 that's exaggerated, my hand being lifted like that. If it's on a smaller anvil, it's much less of an effect. So you'll get more consistent readings. But that's okay, we'll leave the big anvil on for this. For knife making, we're gonna use the diamond indenter, which is in this little thing. Take that, and then in the other indenter packet, a little grub screw. So we'll take that grub screw and pop the indenter in here with the flat side facing the screw and the screw goes in the side. And there we go, that's the first operation. Make sure it's all the way home and the screw's nipped up, you don't have to go overly tight on it, just cut, don't let it move. All right, so for the next trick, we're gonna to go to the back of the machine and then using a Phillips head screwdriver and with the machine obviously unplugged, disconnected from power, we're going to unscrew the back panel. So, We're going to take our weights, clean them off, make sure there's no uh, undue dust, debris or anything on them, packing materials. And there's a little tab there with a hole in it, you can look in and see the weights just going like so, hook onto the tab very gently into place. There we go. You got it? Yeah. It's just coming closer if you want. Yeah. Anyway, we'll have to invest in something better than an iPhone to do videos with. You get the picture or probably you don't. It's pretty straightforward. It's basically just hang them on a hook. For measuring knife blades, we're going to be using Rockwell scale. So we turn this knob here to 1471. It's got a bunch of different three settings. And we're going to take 1471. There it is. Now, all things being equal, we're right now to, uh, to plug the machine in and do our first, our first test on it. So the machine's powered up. And first, a note on the timer. The machine will apply a consistent load for the period of seconds shown on the screen. I find the consistency improves when I go to 15 seconds. You can experiment with that as much as you like. We've got an old blade here, and what we're going to do is, this isn't, we're not going to be measuring, we're simply going to Put the machine under load and offload a few times. See how it's wobbling? You really don't want your machine doing that. Um, we're going to put the machine under load and offload a few times to uh, uh, squeeze out and extrude all of the excess grease and oil that it comes packed with. So, note on the steel, the services have to be fairly well prepared. We're going to watch this screen here, coming closer so that you can see the small needles, a small needle and a large needle. We're going to turn this to preload until the small needle is on the red dot, right in the middle of the red dot, right in the middle of the red dot, somewhere there, 
and the large needle is pointing to the sea. It, it doesn't matter if you were in the middle of the red dot and the needle's over there, just turn this, this bezel, just turn it so that it's in the middle of the sea. It doesn't make any difference, it can be upside down. Obviously it's preferred if it's not, and I can go through how to adjust that, it's in the instructions. But the point is it doesn't matter, just spin that until it is over the large needle. C for Rockwell C. Small needle, red dot, press start. Now, the machine will very carefully and gently apply the load. It'll hold the load for the number of seconds and then it'll unload. And again, this is about extruding out all of the, of the excess oil. So it doesn't really matter at this point what the reading comes back with. Do it again. Again, load it up, small needle, onto the red dot, large needle, onto the C, press start. Not critical. The reading, when, when it is set properly, and this one's way out of calibration, we'll have a look at why in a second. Uh, there's no way that this blade is measuring that Rockwell, so it's coming back up to 70, 79 Rockwell. One of my blades, very proud, I'm hitting 79 Rockwell. We'll have a look at that in a second. And one more time. Once I've done this three times, we're gonna have a look at um, a test block. Rockwell. Woo All right. Don't worry about that. So, here is a test block. You, in your machine, you'll have three different test blocks, and there's only really one you're ever going to use if you're making knives, typically, and that is uh, this particular one here, which is around 60 Rockwell. It'll be different in every machine. As you'll see, they take a number of readings and then they average the readings on the block. And so this one has a average reading of 61.5. So take that out, give it a good clean, make sure there's no schmoo on it. And drop this down anywhere you like on the block, so long as you're not on a hole. And Wind it up again, small needle right in the center of the red dot, large one on the C. Again, you can modify it by doing that. Press start. Now, it won't be helping that this whole machine rocks on this table. You need to have yours on a solid base, but I'll still go through the process. I don't have any light in the back room. And it's giving us a reading of 79 Rockwell. 61.5 block, uh, close to 80 Rockwell. So we're going to now take off this top cover. And this is why. Uh, I made the video, look, we're going to break the machine so you don't have to. I'm guessing the reason that it's not reading as accurately as perhaps it should is that somebody had left the uh, left packing in the top here. Now, I'm not sure who that was, but I'll track it down and we'll give them appropriate counselling. Terrible. All right, let's start again. <sighs> Get our test block. Mine leave, it feels better now yeah, by the way. Come around this side, we'll have a look how it reads on the test block this time around. Again, preload on the red dot.
and it's reading 62.5. No, it's reading 61.5, which is bang on exactly what it's supposed to read on that test block, 61.5. Um, however, yours may not read 61.5, and that's where calibrating your machine comes into play. It's one thing I don't like doing, it's uh, destroying the calibration on a machine that's calibrated, but let's just uh, let's just do that. Okay, in the top of the machine, we've got two locking screws, an adjustment screw, and we've got this one here, which has got a, a um, grub screw with a lock nut on it. So, moving this one across like that is going to just turn it off for a minute so sliding this carrier here in this direction is going to give you so towards the dial sliding this carrier towards the tile is going to push your reading up so if your readings low you need to go that way if you test it at 61.5 for example it came up at 59 needs to move that way in this case we're high so I've got to move it towards the back it's reading 64 or something we're going to push it this way to get 61.5 Give it a test. And as you can see there on 63, so we're going to go back a bit more. So we've gone too far, it's reading at 61. So I need to bring it back towards the dial just the tiniest bit. And we've got that screw there for fine adjustment. We're just gonna slacken these off. Just go a small amount of adjustment on that screw. Keep these back up again. And I've gone a little bit far, now I'm at 62.5. So I'll just come back, not even half a turn. Sixty-one. Getting a little bit closer. I went back too far, so it's only a tiny tiniest of turns. Pushing it back towards the dial just a little bit. Probably should take the weight off before you do that. Someone's going to tell me that. Uh, yeah, uh, you probably want to care a bit more with your ones than I do about this one. So you just take the weight off before you make the adjustment. With a bit of luck, we'll be bang on this time around. Sixty-one point five on the nose. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Go to the pub. Uh, that's not an instruction, by the way. If you go to the pub and get injured in the process, that's um, we don't take any liability. It's just a figure of speech. And we're just going to do three readings to make sure that they average around that same figure. Sixty-one. Bear in mind there is always going to be some variation, so don't get too stressed about half measures. Um, 
can be differences in grease or a particle of dust on the plate or anything can affect it to a half a uh, rock or accuracy. So always take three or four readings. I think Kevin Cashin said to me once he discards his first three or four readings and then he takes five to set five to ten readings along the Ricasso and then does an average. <coughs> it's um you know it's whatever you want. We're getting 61 again on the 61.2 somewhere around that and I'm just going to take one more and I'm pretty comfortable with it sitting at 61.5 and I could play with it some more but you get the idea and you're welcome to play with yours as much as you like contrary to what your mother told you. And here we go, 61.5 on the nose. So like I said, I wouldn't be mucking around with that. I think that's fine. All right, so cool bananas. Turn it off. Okay. All right, so what happens if your machine arrives and the small needle doesn't start on the black dot? When you get it onto the red circle, it's not necessarily in the right spot on the gauge up the top here. Well, in the centre of this carrier up the top here, grab a photo of that, there's a little grub screw and a lock nut. And what we're going to do is wind that lock nut around. such that we're starting on the black dot that loop we get our test block again and Again, doesn't matter which way that needle points, all right? But you can adjust it using that grub screw and the lock nut to get that needle to point at the top. For whatever reason, the other machine we've got always points there and I've never been able to fix it, but it, it works just fine. Um, and I've, been, I've heard even the top of the range ones, that can be the case, but don't quote me on that. I've never had the money to own the top of the range one, so. All right, let's just check calibration again. Now we've fixed that. It's back onto that 61. I might play with that and get it to the 61.5, but you get the general concept. Um, really, there's not, there's not much more to, uh, to think about or worry about. They're uh, pretty simple, solid machines, and um, they should give you years of trouble-free service. Keep them in a nice, cool location. Remember, they're... Uh, they're a highly precise measuring tool rather than a um, piece of blacksmith equipment so keep it away from dust, moisture and um, all those wonderful things that we have in our shops that cause um, certain death to highly precise machines. Pretty straightforward. If you have any questions call Rob and Dave at Gamaco and uh, I'm sure they will be able to figure it out for you if they don't know the answer. Uh, yeah, there we go. Thanks very much.